So um, for folks who are just joining us tonight, my name is Skylar. I'm the executive director at the London Environmental Network. And welcome and thanks for coming to hear about uh, what local candidate uh, plans are for climate action. Real action on climate change and biodiversity loss has never been more important. And selecting candidates that prioritize a green and just society is exactly what we need to be doing this election. So that is why we are hosting these events. So you can learn a little bit more about their climate plans um, and hear you know, what, what the next steps are gonna be for them. This event is currently being recorded and it's also live streamed and we're gonna be sharing it online after the event. Uh, so if anyone missed out, don't feel too bad because we can send them a link. It's also inspired by the 100 Debates for the Environment events, which is run by Green Pack, another great environmental organization. And we do want to note that we have invited all candidates from the major parties and some were unfortunately unable to attend. Um, on our agenda tonight for London West, we're gonna be hearing from each candidate what their climate action plans are for five minutes uh, if they are elected, and then having a Q&A period afterwards with questions from the audience. So if you have any, please submit them in the Q&A section and Leah will select and direct them uh, to the appropriate candidate in the Q&A period. And also if you'd like closed captions, please click the live transcript button at the bottom of the page. Um, we would also like to acknowledge that we're gathered here at this event on the traditional grounds of the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and the Napawak peoples. And we are currently upriver from Chippewa of the Thames First Nation, Oneida Nation of the Thames, and Muncie Delaware Nation. And that we hope whoever is elected uh, makes truth and reconciliation a priority and our organization commits to further working to create a community that is resilient, vibrant, and just for all. Uh, we will tonight be going alphabetically by last name for the candidates. And so for the London West riding, we are joined by Ariel Kayabaga, the Liberal candidate for London West, and Shauna Lukowitz, the NDP candidate for London West. Um, and we will be starting with Ariel. So I'll be passing it over to them um, to do their five minute talk about what their climate action plan is. And then afterwards going over to Shauna and then the Q&A. So Ariel, if you are able to hop on and I don't know, oh, perfect, there we go. Um, I'll just be passing it over to you to chat a little bit more about um, your climate action plan over the next couple of years. Awesome, thank you Skylar for uh, having me. Uh, just uh, finished uh, Canvas and just joining you guys and just excited to be here tonight. Um, I'm going to first introduce myself. My name is uh, Ariel Kaibaga. Uh, as many of you know, I'm a London City Councillor here. Uh, and uh, I came to this uh, city as a refugee uh, fleeing a war in Burundi. Uh, as newcomers, uh, we first moved to Commissioner's Road uh, in the center of our community. Uh, I'm, I'm running in this election because I think that the, the stakes are high for us. Um, as a young Canadian woman, um, as a young Canadian woman who is a woman of color, this election is really important for us. Um, I have, uh, last week I was, I was campaigning in extreme weather, it's was, it was really hot. So definitely um, climate changes are the greatest challenge that we're facing right now. Uh, climate action uh, needs to be, it has been, it will continue to be an important uh, plan for the Liberal Party. I do apologize that I'm just rushing through right now. I just got in from a campus. Uh, but like I said, uh, climate change is the greatest long-term threat that we currently face as a global community. It is also our greatest economic opportunity. Uh, our government, when elected, we, we are committed to uh, build cleaner communities. We'll create green jobs. We'll work towards uh, the net zero uh, emissions by 2050, grow our economy while protecting our environment. Uh, since 2015, we've taken action to protect our oceans, uh, lakes, uh, by banning harmful uh, single-use plastics by 2030, restoring the Great Lakes, which provide um, can, uh, and which uh, provides in 14 Canadian with clean uh, drinking water, uh, supporting 1,200 uh, public transit projects, which we know have also been uh, great support for the City of London, uh, making zero emission vehicles more affordable and accessible, and putting a price on pollution so that it's no longer uh, free to pollute anywhere in Canada. Uh, so that's the plan that you know, the, uh, we, we look forward to implementing. And like I said, climate change affects me, affects my family, affects my child. Uh, this morning I talked about taking my son to school uh, and, and just the things that are important on people's minds right now. London West, I keep talking to people and the things that they care about is uh, climate change, housing, uh, the disproportions that there are in our communities that are also caused by climate change. 
Um, so yeah, look forward to uh, representing you. Uh, once again, my name is Ariel Kayabaga and I'm your Liberal candidate. Uh, thanks for <laughs> putting me on this boss guy. I, I just got in and- <laughs> Sorry, I know. Yeah, I should have noticed, I saw your camera's off and I was like, ooh, but- No, no, uh, it's okay, it's okay. I'm glad you're out canvassing. I think I jumped in really quickly. So. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much Barry, um, for starting us off. Uh, so that was Ariel Kayabaga, the Liberal candidate for London West, talking a bit about the climate action plans that the Liberal government has uh, already done and is planning to do in the future. And now I'm going to pass it over to Shauna Lukowitz, the NDP candidate for London West, to share um, both her plans, but then also the NDP plans for climate action and environmental protection for five minutes. All right, thank you, Skylar. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Shauna Lukowitz, the NDP candidate for Lenin West. I want to thank the Lenin Environmental Network for organizing this meet and greet tonight and giving us the opportunity uh, to share our NDP climate plan. And I want to thank all of you who have joined us and are going to be asking us the hard questions. Um, the environmental crisis is one of the top reasons that I ran as a candidate in 2019, and I'm running again in 2021. Uh, we need to elect an MP who is courageous enough to tackle this situation with the urgency that it requires. This past year, we've literally seen that the world is on fire. Globally, there has been an increase in tornadoes, hurricanes, and other destructive weather events. And locally here in London, we've seen the impacts with um, our poor air quality, high temperatures, uh, localized flooding, and impacts on our food supply with increased prices. Uh, the climate crisis is not some threat for the future, it is happening today. I've been involved in local efforts around the climate crisis for many years. I teach at King's University College and a core component of my course is local climate justice and connecting students to London-based environmental organizations. I have co-led workshops on a just and re green recovery with 350 Canada. I've marched in many climate strike events alongside several of you, I'm sure. And as an active user of transit and my bike, I am not only an advocate for active transportation, I use it regularly. So I come to politics from that deep commitment to community and because I know that it is a place where we can create change. The climate crisis isn't just a crisis of the land, water, and air. Its impacts are felt by people in communities, and there are greater impacts for low-income, racialized, Indigenous, and rural folks. So any climate plan needs to understand that the environment and inequity are directly linked. And we see that locally in the three surrounding First Nations of London where wa water quality is an issue. There have been reoccurring boil water advisories here. But even when there aren't, uh, I've actually just been told recently that people don't drink the tap water regardless because they just don't trust it. This is an inexcusable and the onus is on the federal government and their ongoing broken promises to end boil water advisories and to continue to kick the timeline down the road. Getting clean drinking water to every First Nation needs to be one of our country's top priorities. It is part of climate justice and it is what we commit to as New Democrats. The climate situation is urgent. Scientists tell us that we are almost guaranteed to exceed one and a half degrees of warming unless we act now. We must do everything we can to stop the warming of our planet and transition to a green and sustainable future. As a new Democrat, I am wholly committed to ensuring our children and future generations have a healthy planet to live on. As a candidate, I've committed to ending the Trans Mountain Pipeline and stopping all fossil fuel subsidies. There is no time for half measures or politicians like Trudeau who are willing to buy a pipeline and subsidize big oil and gas to the tune of $18 billion just last year. That money can go into transitioning to good green jobs and infrastructure. So we need courageous MPs willing to go the distance on environmental measures, and that's who I am. Our new Democrat climate justice plan is modeled after the Green New Deal and puts people and planet at the center. It includes science-based emission reduction targets that get us to a reduction of 50% by 2030. We will expand federal funding by two and a half billion to help communities like London respond to disasters and adapt infrastructure to withstand the floods and other extreme weather events like we've seen this year and in previous years. We just announced today that we will double the investment in public transit projects and assist cities like London to fully electrify our buses by 2030, as well as expand active transportation infrastructure so we can all better move around our city and get to where we need to be. We will retrofit housing and buildings, as well as introduce stringent environmental standards for new builds. 
We also need to be making sure that along with the climate plan, we are taking care of workers. And that's why we have a plan to create over a million new good jobs in all communities. We will rebuild local economies with meaningful family sustaining work in every part of the country, all the while helping to make the changes that we need to succeed in a low carbon future. Lastly, but as a top priority, our commitment to reconciliation and just relationships includes working hand in hand with Indigenous people, recognizing their deep knowledge and understanding of the land is key to ensuring we confront the climate crisis. Jagmi and I are with you and fully committing to addressing the climate crisis so that all of us have a healthy, sustainable future where our children and grandchildren and communities can thrive. We need to elect an MP on September 20th in London West who understands the urgency, will go the distance to what is needed and now, and who has the courage to stand up to powerful interests. That's who I am, and I ask for your support on September 20th. Thank you. Perfect. Right on time. So thank you. Um, all right. So next, I will be passing it over to Leah, who is another one of the London Environmental Network staff. And she's been going through the questions in the Q&A box. So if you do have any, please, people feel free to keep adding them. Um, but we've got about 17 minutes for Q&A. And we're asking candidates to keep their answers to one to two minutes, um, just so we can get through as many as possible. Awesome. Thanks, Skylar. Um, so we're going to start with this first question from Haley Everett. Uh, the question is, according to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, the greenhouse gas emissions generated from wasting food are almost equivalent to the emissions generated from worldwide trans road transportation. If elected, how, will, how would your party work towards the reduction of food waste in Canada? So we'll start with Ariel and then for one to two minutes and then pass it over to Shauna. Sorry, you're muted. I'll fix that. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, so thank you for the question. Uh, so just wanted to, uh, again, reiterate that our government has uh, committed to reduce uh, the net emission by uh, 2050. Uh, the Liberals uh, have committed to the 30% um, target by 2030, and we have a proven track record on nature uh, on, on reducing our emissions. Um, sorry, <laughs> uh, and our carbon emissions by 60% uh, by 20, uh, 2030. Uh, the Liberal government has already been working on those things and we want to continue to, to work on that. And uh, when elected, I, I, I will continue to, to push and to, to do more in, in that sector. Thanks. Thanks, and Shauna? Thank you. Uh, so the NDP uh, would develop a national strategy to reduce food waste in Canada, um, as well as promote Waste Awareness Day. Um, we intend to invest in municipalities so we can better handle our waste and reduce our waste and invest in composting and uh, green programs that can help people. Um, as well, uh, we would commit and have committed to, um, uh, you know, Indigenous food sovereignty. So working with uh, Indigenous uh, First Nations, Inuit and Métis people um, around uh, creating uh, uh, food systems uh, uh, in communities that would help, uh, you know, them have food security, um, reduce food waste and ensure a fresh and healthy food. Wonderful, thanks. Um, the next question, just scrolling up to the top here, uh, comes from Inge Stahl. I hope I'm pronouncing that okay. Um, so the question is, one of the things that contribute to climate change is urban sprawl. What will you do to, pro to provide affordable housing while preventing urban sprawl? So again, we'll start with Ariel and then Shauna. Yeah, 
Yeah, so um, affordable housing is actually something that's really needed in London. And I just want to talk about how the national housing strategy that the Liberal government has done has supported Londoners, um, especially during a time where the Conservative government has uh, increased, uh, uh, removed rental regulations and has been putting incentives in, in condos versus uh, rentals. Um, our government is committed to building more cleaner uh, communities, uh, and that also comes in, in, in through housing. Uh, the national housing strategy also has um, the rapid housing initiatives that has also been uh, green. Uh, will, we have already been doing that and we will continue. Uh, and I think that uh, our community has received a lot of support from the government, especially during the COVID-19 and will continue to do so. Uh, I think that uh, housing is a human right uh, and we need to continue to invest in that. So I, I ran in politics uh, because of housing. I grew up in social housing and I know how important having a dignified and, and, and accessible and clean house is important. Uh, and as we know that the, the, the rates of asthma in, in our city uh, uh, for children is high, I think it's important that we continue to build more greener um, house. So our government is committed to continue to um, build more um, affordable housing and rapid um, housing initiatives that will support seniors, women, uh, and many people who are in need of uh, more affordable housing. Wonderful, thank you. And Shauna? Thank you. Uh, so you've asked a question around uh, housing and density that is near and dear to my heart. Um, you know, as the president of the Urban League and a lot of the work that I've done in London has been around um, sustainable uh, urban development and, and curbing sprawl. Uh, as most of us know, you know, London has, um, you know, uh, takes up some of the largest amounts of land comparable uh, to uh, the population um, of Toronto but spread out. And so when we're talking about building housing uh, and affordable housing, then, you know, anything that we're doing related to whether it's housing or transit uh, needs to be done in uh, conjunction with thinking about the climate crisis. And so building uh, housing that is, uh, you know, up to environmental standards, that is uh, net zero, um, that is in communities where people are able to access the things that they need so that they can walk, uh, take transit, um, you know, use their bikes to get to the services that they need to get to their good jobs, to get to childcare, it is all interlinked. And so, um, you know, whether it's housing and as I said, or transit, uh, we need to be thinking about how we're building cities and communities so that they uh, all, not only address people's needs, but they address uh, the climate crisis and uh, building density doesn't have to be, you know, super uh, um, sky high rises, it can be, um, you know, mid rise buildings, uh, dense, we have lots of land here in London to build on lots of land across the country. Uh, we are, a, we are a country of, um, you know, cities and, and spaces and uh, we need to protect our farmland we need to protect our green spaces um, and it creates better, more sustainable and thriving communities overall. So that's what we commit to as New Democrats. Thanks. Um, so I'm going to kind of combine two questions that were both touching on um, electric vehicles. So London's largest contributor to greenhouse gas emissions are the use of personal vehicles. Um, what does your party propose uh, to do to eliminate the sale of internal combustion engine sales or incentivize electric vehicles. So we'll start with, again, Ariel and then Sean. Thank you. Yeah, so part of our um, climate action plan, oh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, part of our um, climate action plan, uh, we have included, um, you know, incentives around uh, making uh, electric vehicles more, more accessible to people. So this is something that, um, you know, will help uh, re reduce the emissions and which is, um, again, something that we've been doing and we will continue to do. So our plan is uh, to continue to, to make it more accessible for people to have um, electric cars uh, and uh, which also helps because we're also investing in transit um, projects, uh, which also are coming to London and creating jobs as well. So I think that um, our plan is bold and we uh, want to continue to reduce the emissions um, by zero uh, by 2035. I'm assuming you want me to go next. <laughs> yes. 
Okay. Uh, so the NDP, uh, you know, has uh, incentives for electric vehicles as part of our plan. Uh, we would also invest in the uh, um, infrastructure for electric vehicles. Uh, I mentioned earlier that we would um, double the amount that's uh, invested in transit as well as uh, encouraging active transportation. Uh, we're also a big believer in uh, uh, community energy and uh, changing our uh, postal fleet and our postal uh, vehicles over to uh, electrical vehicles, um, as well as buses. And so, uh, you know, we are committed to uh, net zero electricity uh, and, uh, you know, moving towards getting off of, uh, you know, single use uh, vehicles and doing everything that we can to encourage people to not only buy electric vehicles, but really to use transit and active transportation uh, where they can investing in, in inner city bus um, uh, routes again, as well as uh, rail from the Quebec Windsor corridor. Awesome, thank you both for answering that question. Um, the next one we'll hop to uh, comes from an anonymous attendee, a uh, really good question um, about how climate change is negatively affecting biodiversity. What will your party do to protect wildlife, especially species at risk? So we'll start with Ariel and then Shauna. Thanks again for this question. Uh, one of the, the things that our Liberal Party is going to do is uh, increase more national parks. Um, in, our, in our plan for climate action, we have also included 10 new national uh, parks, uh, which will help endangered species. Uh, the NDP is uh, uh, committed to pursuing a nature agenda, which uh, is anchored by our commitment to safeguarding ecosystems and biodiversity. And so our commitment is to protect 30% of land, fresh water, and oceans by 2030. Uh, we will expand national parks, and our plan also involves uh, restoring uh, urban biodiversity and ensuring that the Species at Risk Act is enforced. Uh, we will launch a 10-year nature plan to resolve Reverse species loss, and we would curb the import and uh, and uh, domestic trade of wild animals. And we will further protect our oceans and our fresh water by reducing emissions from fishing, uh, from shipping and fishing, um, and expanding um, marine protected areas. Great, thank you both uh, for your answer to that question. Um, we're going to switch it up. So for the next question, it'll be Shauna first and then Ariel second. Um, and the question I'm going to ask comes from Roberto Osorio. Um, and the question is, global warming is an international issue. I know you're representing Canada and don't have much to do with other countries, but how can Canada encourage or support other countries that are not taking this problem seriously? And what does your party plan to do? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question because we all have a part to play. And so number one, we need to lead by example. We need to demonstrate that we're taking the climate crisis seriously. Uh, we are the only G7 country who has not met our Paris Agreement target. So that's significant. That is not the example that we want to be as a climate leader. Uh, you know, we can invest in, in, in supporting using the infrastructure and the uh, manufacturing and the, the, the jobs that exist here in Canada to support uh, environmental initiatives around the world. Thanks. And Ariel? I think I agree um, that we have to lead by example and um, we have committed to emissions down uh, but to zero by uh, 2040 uh, and also eliminating single use plastics. Uh, but it's also important to talk about how our climate action plan has been endorsed by uh, NDP leader Mokir and uh, the Green Party uh, leader for, from BC. So it is a bold uh, and, and a step forward. And I'm excited to, uh, to continue to work and push. There's a lot more that can be done as uh, we cannot ignore our climate anymore. I think we need to be a leader in this sector and I will make sure that um, we are a leader in that, in that sector. Great, thank you both. Um, I think this might be our last question. Uh, it comes from Kelly Moore. Um, and the question is, why is the climate crisis an important issue to you personally? So uh, we'll start with, again, gonna switch it up. So Shauna and then Ariel. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so uh, as I said, it's one of the reasons that I decided to run as a candidate in 2019. Um, I've talked about how the issue uh, of the environmental crisis has been keeping me up at night. And although I've worked locally on these issues and you know pushed issues around uh, uh, the climate crisis and justice for years, uh, I recognize that these issues need to be solved at a national and an international level. Um, you know, like many people, I'm also a mother. Uh, I, I teach young people every Every single day, I hear the climate anxiety um, in our students and in young folks and my kids and in our uh, and in their friends. And you know, as I said, it takes bold, courageous leadership um, to to follow through on the climate crisis. Uh, we have had a lot of talk, um, and as I said, we have not met our existing targets, and we are running out of time. And it's just one of those things where uh, the urgency required is something that is driving me every day. At the door, it is something that we talk about. It is something that we hear across London West. We know that people are concerned about this. They're concerned about their children's futures. I'm concerned about our children's futures. Um, and uh, it's directly tied to uh, inequity. Uh, the environmental justice is racial justice. It is gender justice. Um, it is Indigenous justice. And so you, we cannot uh, you know, uncouple these issues. If we want to solve one of them, we have to solve it together. You. And Ariel. Yeah, no, uh, I think this question is really great. Um, last week or two weeks ago, when we were canvassing, we were canvassing in extreme heat. You know, it was really hot outside. Um, and I was out canvassing with my son and just thought. Uh, and also, let me just talk about how important it was to hear from Londoners who kept uh, bringing up climate change. Um, there were people who told me that 10 years ago, they wouldn't be having this conversation with me, but today they are having this conversation with me because they see how it is affecting um, the future of their grandchildren, uh, the future of their children. Uh, I, 10 years ago, was um, at a march uh, in COP16, um, you know, marching for uh, the rights of Indigenous people not to have uh, their trees cut and, and, and fighting for climate change. Uh, 10 years later, we uh, passed an emergent motion at the City of London uh, to declare London uh, under an emergency uh, climate action, uh, sorry, an emergency climate. Uh, and from, you know, it's something that I've been fighting for the last 10 years of my life, but not just for me, but for my son. London has the highest rate of children with asthma, and that's a problem to me. Um, we cannot ignore the, uh, our climate uh, change, uh, the way it's changing right now, because we can feel it all around us. Um, I think it's important to talk about how we are going to protect uh, our species, how we need to protect our planet for not just for ourselves, but for the generations to come. Um, like I said, our government is committed to continue to reduce the emissions. Uh, I will fight for that because we are the generation of tomorrow and we need to have a planet to be on next, uh, in our future. So thank you. Thank you both so much for sharing those plans and then also those personal stories. I love when people put questions like that into the chat because I think, um, you know, it re reminds us to reflect on really what are making people want to run for office and I really appreciate both of your answers so much. So this wraps up our time tonight. Um, we did three back to back meet and greets. So thanks for folks who stuck it out to the end, but also thanks for anyone who joined us just for the last London West one. And thank you so much both to Shauna and Ariel for coming in talking a bit about um, what your plans are for climate action. Don't forget folks to vote during the advance polls this weekend or on election day on September 20th and cast your ballot for um, a candidate that cares about the environment. Um, and I hope you guys all have a wonderful rest of your evening and rest of the week. And I also know that you can vote, I think if you just show up at um, the elections offices. So if those times don't work for you this weekend or on the 20th, do make sure that you make some time for that. So thank you very much everyone for joining us and we'll be sharing some of these videos later. So have a good rest of your evenings. Thank you.